I don't really agree with domination. Uh, I don't like domination very much. Uh, if it's me, I go. You see me go resolve a lot. Uh, the other thing that you can do, you can go sorcery. Looking at their composition, looking at the elo, I would probably. I would probably. Let me zoom in so you can see. I don't know if I take the stopwatch as often as I take biscuits. I view Jax as a lane where you bully him uh, at this level. You bully him really hard, and he doesn't have he doesn't have the tools to really stop the bully. Uh, to the point of where I go as far as to go coin a lot with Klepto. Coin is kind of like a sleeper OP thing, so enjoy it while it lasts. Basically, any lane where you can get away with taking coin, you should take it because you finish Triforce at like 10 minutes, sometimes 9.5 uh, if you get a solo kill with it. Um, but yeah, you can, get, you can get Triforce if you lane well at like 10.5 minutes. So anyways, yeah, Sorcery is good too. Uh, but anyways, enough about that. Okay, so when you turn level 2... When you turn level 2, you should be in front, not behind. Alright? So like here... If it's me, what I like... Okay, you have two options. Either you auto this and use your passive to accelerate forward, or you can be advanced. This is what Mankey does. You can actually just walk at Jax here because you're going to turn level 2 anyways. So you can just walk and let, these min let the minions kill this for you. And even if you're here, you're still going to get level 2. Okay? So, at level 2, it should be immediate. Control E, place the barrel, auto the barrel, look to combo him. Every time. It's not, this is not a fucking, this, this isn't chill time, dude. This is, this is real, this needs to happen. Immediate. Instant. See how there's no barrels happening? I pause the frame. If it's me, I'm literally here putting an E here and it getting ready to I, I'll triple barrel here to be honest I would legitimately I would place the E I would let him trade into me if he wants and I'll E and, and I'll put it here and I'll step forward and I'll look to triple barrel him and, and kill him that's how I play there's no there's no time to, to waste and this is in essence you know when you find somebody like this Jax who takes all this free poke who doesn't abuse the brush like you gotta take advantage of that <laughs> so here you get the auto the passives applied right and then you decide to ult but there's no rush i hope you understand this concept there's no rush you have a Jax who's super low with minions under tower he's gonna have to back or he's dead regardless okay once you once you use your uh once you use your refillable, like you have mana to keep the pressure on this guy, you don't need to ult him. Try, if you're winning here, to keep your ult and just use the pressure of the barrels. Jax, I would put in the, the easy to like normal difficulty category. Like if this was a if this was a fucking mobile fire guide or something, I'd put Jax in like easy to medium. It only really gets hard if the guy playing Jax is a fucking beast. Like an absolute beast at Jax and knows how to get through this lane phase. Which is honestly one of the hardest lane phases for Jax in the game. It's obnoxious if played right. It's really tough. Because poor Jax, he can't really engage. Because if he jumps to you, he has to jump to your barrel, smack it, turn his E on. And if he misses any of that, he's already fucked up. If you cleanse the E and then barrel him right away, he's like out of lane. It's fucked up lane. So the only time that Jax ever really beats you, the only time that Jax really ever beats you is if he gets to that lane phase and farms well, gets some items, and then starts splitting into you, which at that point, yeah, he'll beat your ass. Um, so I want you to view it that way, and I want you to understand that situations like these, you can beat Jax without having to waste your ult. 
as long as you're harassing smartly with the barrels, which you're doing a pretty good job at. You just kind of rush the ult here, which in my opinion is unnecessary because if you had just calmly pushed the wave, you were going to kill him anyways. And then you have your ult for some other shit down here. I know ult sucks now on GP, but you'd still be able to use it maybe to keep a tower up. Which is basically the only value that I get out of my ult now is not so much getting kills, but when my teammates feed, I get to ult the towers and keep <laughs> get the farm that they would have missed. All right, so here's my issue um, with this whole situation. Why are you standing here uh, in the spot? What this does not all this space is pointless. Part of your reason, like, you would avoid, like, even if your brain is off and you're, like, looking at the shop or something. I don't know. It happens, right? Whatever. You, you can't be 100% focused at all times. I get it. Why are you in the middle of the map? You should be here in the brush or here in the brush. Put a barrel down and start backing. This will protect you against the gank. The jungle will not be able to face check those brushes without dying or getting kited. Right? But if you stand out in the middle, kind of makes your job a lot harder because they know you're there. Right? This is like top lane 101. You got a lane crashed and you can't harass. You're debating on whether or not to back. Sit in the fucking bush. Just sit in the bush. Make a, And the other thing is an issue of distance. Jungle has to walk all the way up to the absolute corner of the map to do anything. That's what you want. You don't, you don't need to sit right here. It's lazy. All right, so I look at Udyr while I'm pushing. I'm looking at Udyr, right? I see that Udyr's in mid, right? What am I going to do? I'm going to shove that. Jax is still down for 12. Udyr's still in mid. Then I'm smacking the tier 2. Where are you going? Where are you going? Hit the tier 2. Beat it up. You've got a couple rotations of Triforce. Look, he's still not... Dude, if he's not rotating to you, you need to hit this. Like, if he's not moving, like, if I could see him, you, you have to hit the tower. This tower, by the time that Jax TPs, can be about here, HP-wise. That's very important for GP. Knock the towers down. Because let me tell you what you're doing. Let me tell you what you're doing when, when you're playing top lane, okay? Why we like this early tower. If you get this tower down... The amount of space, like the amount of things you can do as GP opens up, okay? So if you break this tower and you shove to here, you see me do this on uh, on like Pantheon, for example. I like to roam around a lot with Pantheon. So what do I do? I push somebody under tower. If it's tier two, I push them under tower. I back and then this space from, I'll draw it out for you, from here, To here is a timer. You know those little fucking, those little timers with the fucking sand in them? You know what I'm talking about? Those little, uh, I don't know what these things are called. I guess sand timers. Basically, what you're doing is when you shove a lane, you have a, a window of time where you could, you can back. And you can just run around the map. You know why? Because if you ba if you back here, hourglass, that's what it is. <laughs> Zonias. Yeah. Basically, what the fuck is that? What is that? Yeah, Shiraki, thank you, buddy. Dude, we have some weird Easter eggs on Streamlabs now. There was some weird shit going on. So if you shove the la lane and back, and then run to bottom. Fucking, I don't know why they put that shit in. If you shove the lane, you go to bottom, and you run down the bottom, and you make a play. You have teleport up, right? You can actually shove this, go down to bottom, make a, like, do a fight, whatever you want to do. Then back, TP to top, or just back and walk to top if Jax isn't pushing fast enough. You see what I'm saying? Stand timer. <laughs> so that's why uh, 
That's why this is all happening. Now, if you if you aren't being pushed out of the tower, take it, and then you get a bigger sand timer. Because if you push to here, you get even more time to run around the map and do something at bot lane. And to and to knock down a tower or something. And not and Jax has to go, oh shit, and then he has to start pushing from here all the way to your tower, which buys you time to make the play and then get back in position on top. I honestly don't know what to tell you. Like, you're literally throwing because you like just standing back in the middle of the map over and over again. You did it here, and then here, you you got a lot done, and you like don't think that you need to leave. Like, you, you need to leave from a safe, like they were all bottom. They gave you mid tower. You're low, you don't have flash. Like, you need to walk away, like far away. I feel this is the, I feel like I've been in this position so many times and it, as GP and it always ends the same way. And this is kind of, this is very much what I don't like about Gangplank um, as the game drags on is that I can't, I can't just say fuck everybody and split. Uh, that's why you have to be very delicate up here and make sure you don't die. You have to think very far ahead and think like, oh, if Udyr collapses, am I dead? And then you have to adjust accordingly. Because with like a Trindamir, for example, you really could. You could just say fuck it and just start running down the map. Uh, Udyr might be annoying, but you're still Trindamir and you can waste a lot of the enemy's time. Camille's another one. Fiora's another one where you can just say, I am the superior split push player, so I will split. You can't do that GP because this kit's just not designed to do it. So I think back here is where you lost the game, bro. If I'm being honest. If you, w if you happen to win this, it was pure luck. Because, in my opinion, their composition outscales yours, like, from a solo queue perspective. It's just one of those compositions, like, your, your Zeref has proved that he's not that good. Your bot lane's proven that they're not that good. Your Graves has proven he's not that good. He's only got 143 farm at 23 minutes. So, in my eyes, I just look across the board and I go, I got caught here. It, it was GG when I got caught here. Right here. This is what lost you this game. There's other little complaints, like you AFK backing here and here, but this play loses you this game. Because when you get caught, they get barren. And when you get caught, they get barren, and you no longer get to push anymore. So if you had taken this and backed here and got out without dying, or maybe even killed the Udyr, which is possible if you had repositioned sooner. If this looks like a this is a Hiroshima, if you if you had repositioned and got the Udyr kill, and then backed up and then started working bottom, you would have been able to control this game because you could push bottom out and then look that Baron with your ult, and then you could just keep doing what you did up here. You feel me? So I, I say you lost it. I, I'd say you didn't necessarily lose at 24 minutes, but you took you took GP's strongest point, and I think you messed it up. And it wouldn't normally be game breaking if your teammates weren't so bad, but you also need to realize that this separates your win rate. Right? This is this is the difference between a low win rate and a high win rate spot. Is like here you stay alive. Go bottom, game's fine. All right, dude. I think that's it. The other shit beyond this point is just, it's a coin flip. And I think you know that as well as I do. That And even like you guys take an inhib here, that's not anything you do specifically. That's just, maybe you hit a triple barrel, good ult or something, but your teammates also had to contribute because everyone has late game items on the other team and we're not super far ahead. Our window is at the tw like the 15 to 25 minute mark. That's where our window is. You lose that, they get barren, now we're flipping. All right, cool. Hope this helps. And thanks for submitting GP, it was a good talk. Cool. YouTube, what up, it's Nice. 
Good to be back coaching for season eight. Love ya. I'll see you for the next coaching. I'm out. Peace. Crackers. Love you guys.